Okay, the show is called Decipherment of Linear X, and this project started almost 10 years ago, and it began by my driving my truck on my property in upstate New York one day. It was raining outside, and the tires on my truck spun around and kicked up all this dirt and sticks. And I happened to get out of my truck and pick up one of the sticks that was kicked up out of the mud. And the stick was carved with these marks from the top to the bottom and all the way around. And these marks looked like some kind of calligraphic marking. Um, they looked like symbols of some sort. And I initially thought for a moment that perhaps I'd found some American Indian artifacts or something of some kind made by a human. And I thought that the marks were some kind of symbology. Um, so I decided to treat my, um, the land on this farm as an archaeological site and I dug the whole thing up. I put strings on the ground and gridded it off. I made papers in which I archived every stick that I found and I built up this huge collection of these sticks. And what was driving this kind of obsessional uh, uh, co collecting was that um, the marks on the sticks uh, bore a really strong similarity to a, an ancient human language that I was very familiar with. I used to study philosophy and for a whole semester we worked on Linear B, which was a language that was active in Crete in 1600 BC. And it was one of the first known human writing systems. And the marks on these sticks, about 80% of them, are very similar to the language of Linear B. And um, I uh, eventually found out that the marks on these sticks were made by a species of wood-eating beetle that, that, you know, hides underneath the bark of a, of a branch or of a tree, and then digs out these breeding chambers and that's where these marks come from. Um, and when I found that out, I was actually quite depressed and I thought I'd spent all this time, you know, organizing all of this material and digging it all up and, and that, that this, in fact, was not any kind of culturally significant material at all. There was just nothing to it. It was just a bunch of sticks uh, in which there were marks made by a beetle, by insects. Um, but then I thought about it again, and I thought, my God, it still looks like a language. These marks look like a language, and so uh, maybe there's something interesting here. Perhaps I've actually found a writing system nevertheless, and it just happens to be a writing system made by insects rather than humans. And so with that as a premise, I decided to explore the project fully and carry it out as far as I could. And so what I ended up doing was taking the, the sticks that I'd collected and rolling them on, on ceramic material, like Sumerian cylinder seals, and taking the impression of these sticks so that I could actually see these marks in a very clear way. And then these uh, ceramic tablets were then fired, and I took a camera with a close-up lens and shot all of the individual symbols and tried to build up a symbology or a symbol system of some sort. And that's what these photographs are over here. And then once the, um, I kind of fully documented this mark making system, I decided to ask 12 scholars from around the world to take a look at this new language and to consider uh, whether this in fact was a linguistic system. And I asked them to use the scholarly language and scholarly standards of their field and to apply it to this case and to write me an actual um, academically viable paper about whether this is in fact a language. And so that's what I've done. I've um, I put together this journal, The Decipherment of Linear X, and uh, there are 12 essays in here Um, one of them is by Luke Steeles, who's the head of artificial intelligence and robotics at the University of Brussels. 
and he wrote this uh, amazing paper in which he talked about the origins of intelligence inside electromechanical, complex electromechanical systems. Um, so he decided not to talk about this project directly, but to talk about it in, in, uh, in comparison to robots, essentially. And um, he, he conducted this experiment in which um, he set two robots in an arena and had them interact with each other. And his claim is that over a period of time, this interaction became more and more elaborate and there was an imbalance between the two robots and one robot ended up dominating the other. And from his perspective, that was the first sign of something related to consciousness. And the thesis of the paper is that the first sign of consciousness in these robotic systems is the master-slave relationship. And uh, so people wrote papers of this kind in which questions of the beginnings of consciousness, the origins of intelligence are being explored. And um, they u they're using my project as a, as a springboard towards talking about all of these subjects. And that's really what I hope to do. This is really a thought experiment that I've carried out for the purpose of, you know, generating a series of, um, of thoughts, of responses in a viewer. And there's a clearly absurdist side of this project, which I think um, is part of the seduction of it as well. This project called for, for a lot of research. I, I had to look into the origins of language and all of the various theories about how language began in the human species. And there's uh, lots of information on um, intelligence in animals as well. In fact, here in Leipzig is one of the major centers in the world for studying uh, language use and, um, and intelligence in monkeys and um, in gorillas and that sort of, that sort of in primates, basically. Um, so there's actually an audience here in Leipzig that I, this show is being pitched to. I haven't con contacted them yet, but uh, I think they'll find this interesting.